On this week's weekly video fishing forecast, we have more on the big August issue. For those who want to target Cobia, we have a few things you should know about as well. And our correspondents check in from around the aisle with their latest information, all here at thefisherman.com. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Today is Thursday, August 4th, and the monthly August Glossy Magazine is out now. For those who want to fish the deep to the east, Tony Salerno has a great read on targeting those big offshore fluke. Now that the blue water fishery is in full swing, Captain Darren Doris has an article on hunting for Wahoo. Also remember our digital edition is out, and Nick DeGenero shares his tips on daytime yellowfin chunking. That's just a small sample of the content that is available in print and online. Remember, $29.95 gets you 12 print issues and all the weekly digital content and full access to the website as well. And best of all, you can compete in the Dreamboat and Coastal Kayak Clash. With the influx of cobia in our area this year, be aware there are a few things you do need to know. While there can be a great table fare, remember federal regulations are in place for cobia in New York State. The season is all year with a two fish bag limit at 37 inches per fish. We have no changes for the Dreamboat Contest. The standings remain the same. Dean Paella is in first, Rob Carrizano second, Garrett Weir third, and Eddie Terrible in fourth. The fish of the month is sea bass. Get out there and fish. Lots of time left. The Dreamboat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber only multi species fishing competition with a chance to win a new Steigercraft 23 Miami powered by Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. Now, let's check in with Dave for the latest on the Coastal Kayak Clash contest. Hey, everybody, it's Dave Anderson. I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of what's going on in the Coastal Kayak Clash this week. It's been a couple of weeks since we had a fish hit the leaderboard, but this week we have two. We have a 16 and a half inch porgy from Mark Carlson, which landed in third place for the category. And we have a 22 inch sea bass for Alfred Green, which also landed in third place for the category. There have been no major changes on the top three. Justin Oster is still leading the world with 11 points, and there's a whole handful of others with three. Let's check out the map around the island and see what's going on. Out west, fluke to eight pounds were brought to the net last week. The top areas were Deb's Inlet and Reynolds Channel. The reefs are also holding summer flatties, porgies, sea bass, and a few ling as well for a good mixed bag. The cobia bites slacked off, but you can still find them under the bunker pods with sharks and bluefish. Blowfish and kingfish are setting up in the bays as well for the kids to catch. Remember, some chum always does help. The Wanto and Meadowbrook bridges had to run a weak fish last week, according to local sources also. In Mauritius and Shinnecock, we heard of a good fluke bite during the week. Specifically, Ray Powers had a 10.2 pounder in Mauritius Bay. Very nice fish for the inside. Outside on the reef, I heard of some fluke being caught as well. The reef is also holding sea bass, but a lot of the fish are small and keepers are tougher to come by. Both Shinnecock and Mauritius jetties are holding trigger fish near the rocks and buoy chains behind the inlets. Out east in Montauk, the fluke fishing has been pretty phenomenal on the ground south at a point. A lot of limits are being taken and some of the fish are topping the 10 pound mark. Give big natural baits a shot for a trophy. I also heard some stripers are still active in the Block Island area, but the bite did slow down a bit. Up north, porgies remain the best choice on the central south shore. The eastern sound has a better fluke bite going on and some keeper sea bass are mixed in with them. This Friday the 5th, the Long Island Babes and Bucks will be having a meet and greet at Jones Beach Bait and Tackle from 5.30 to 8.30. Check out the flyer for all the information needed. One of our YouTube viewers wanted to get more fishing intel on the North Fork of the Long Island area. New England editor Dave Anderson's weekly video fishing forecast may have some information you're looking for. Click on the card in the top right to check it out. Keep those questions coming. We will do our best to answer them. Now let's check in with News 12 meteorologist Rich Von Owen, who is reporting plenty of short fluke action in the Western Bays, but he says the bigger ones can be found in the ocean like this beauty right here. Now let's get the weekend forecast. Rich. Hey, thanks, Matt. Let's check the, uh, the weekend forecast, see what we got going on. You can always check favorite apps, favorite websites, weather tools, whatever you got. This is a general heads up, general overview on the upcoming weekend across Long Island. Lots of orange and red on the water temps, uh, certainly up there mid 70s and uh, continuing to come on up with some of the hot weather we've seen. Wave heights, pretty good Saturday, kind of a light and variable breeze, becoming a little more of a choppy deal Saturday afternoon, more southwest. Gonna be some clouds and a little bit of rain around, but 
For the most part, nothing tremendous. We start to get um, you know, some wind later Sunday afternoon from the southwest. Some four to eight start to build. So I think we'll squeeze it in the ocean. A pretty good weekend overall. The sound should be okay. You know, along the shore should be fine. Futurecast, you know, some green on there for Saturday. We've got a stalled front, which will produce a little bit of rain back and forth. So it's not going to be a perfect day. The winds won't be too bad, but the winds start to crank up, uh, you know, later Saturday night a little bit. And certainly on Sunday afternoon, more of a southwest breeze. So the south-facing shores there, especially late in the day, we get some 10s to 20s, gusts to 25. High tide Saturday, north shore for the early morning, south shore for the early afternoon. We've got some 80s to near 90 for the weekend, Saturday, Sunday. A little cooler across, across Montauk. Check the uh, Guru. There's your Saturday. And uh, looking at it from this perspective, you know, a little southwest here. You know, maybe a light shop here. It's not perfect, but, you know, it's doable. A lot of cloud cover and probably a little bit of rain around. And there's your Sunday. And, you know, still at southwest, persistent wind here. The waves aren't too bad until we get towards mid-late afternoon. Start to bump those up with that wind starting to crank later Sunday. So I think we're going to squeeze in uh, another decent uh, weekend here as we kick off August. Be safe as always. Catch him up. Matt, back to you. From Sag Harbor, we have Andy with a solo report this week. Thanks, Matt. So it's that time of year. Most of the fishing is pretty strong. We got good striped bass fishing out near Montauk, good sea bass, good porgies, all great for the kitchen to cook them up. Um, also fluke, especially 60 to 80 feet of water, particularly has been very strong. Um, and then as even off the beach on some bunker ponds, we even had some reports of cobia being caught as well, which is really exciting stuff, especially for our area, a little bit rare. Um, and then further offshore as well, the bite's been pretty strong with yellowfin mixed in with the bluefin about 25 to 40 miles um, out off the beach. So uh, keep those lines tight and we'll catch you next week. Stay tuned. Back to you, Matt. From Shinnecock, let's check in with Mike Dean. Thanks, Matt. Hey, everybody. Uh, still into that kind of summer doldrum fishing. The fluke bite is continuing to be, you know, pretty solid for, you know, on the reefs and in that deeper 70, 80 feet of water. Um, in terms of striped bass, there isn't a whole lot going on, really nothing off the beach. In the back bays at night, right by the inlets, there's been a couple of fish, sometimes their first light. Uh, I really haven't had any luck. In the, in the past few years, we've gotten a nice amount of small bass that are feeding on uh, all these small baits that are you know, right in the marsh line, but that hasn't really materialized this year. Uh, fished Shinnecock Reef on Hampton Lady on Sunday night with my son, and got a few sea bass keepers, lots of nice sized porgies, and just constant bites, a lot of shorts, so it was kind of nice to bend a rod. Um, you know, just that typical pattern, the tuna bite, uh, yellowfin uh, bite, you know, some bluefin, you know, within like a 10 to 15 mile radius of Pombra has been pretty good last weekend. A number of people did really well and uh, continue to hear those that, that have made the trip and those that have gone out further, gotten in some bigger stuff. So kind of what's to expect around, uh, you know, for the start of August and before you know it, we'll be into the fall run and game on. All right, get out there, catch them up this weekend, and have fun. Back to you, Matt. Thanks. From Northport, we have Mark McGowan from Cal Harbor Bait and Tackle. Wow, it's another busy day at the shop, but let's take a break to give out the uh, reports. You know, August. August is that wonderful month of memories. You know, you get a lot of people on vacation. Now that the COVID has lifted a bit, you've got a lot of people traveling around. So what does that mean? Folks that like moved out are coming back to visit relatives, to hang out with friends, have memories. And memories and fishing, they go hand to hand, you know, it's just very easy to go out on a boat. If you don't have a boat, you want to get out and just uh, look at the different perspective of life from, from the water staring at the land. It's completely flipped image. It's beautiful. Go down onto one of your local party boats, head boat, find a charter captain or something like that, um, and go out and enjoy the month. This is a great time. It's going to be hot, so remember, want to be sun protected and everything. But we have so much going on locally. Uh, if you just want an easy time and not really have to over focus and you got kids you want to keep them to pay attention That's why North Shore is so blessed with porgies. We have loads and loads of porgies It's just the most wonderful fishery. You can use clams. You can use worms It's just so much to do and remember you got to take good pictures because these kids they grow so fast You'll see next month a uh, uh, lot of phone calls you get to exchange pictures it's nice and then next august the summertime when you visit everyone you won't believe how big everyone's grown you know and uh it's just the time to get out don't waste your time with life you want to enjoy it while you can the bay is so packed with bait uh 
my favorite bait is here, peanut bunker. And when peanut bunker are three to four inches, to me, that's some of the best bait because we've had the rain bait and that's small and that makes a tough focus. But when these baits start becoming three or four inches, that means they are the perfect forage for so many types of fish out here. Sea bass, fluke, snappers, uh, larger bluefish, striped bass, weak fish, you know, you name it. You're gonna find stray fish in the mix, but uh, this is that time to really take advantage of the peanut bunker. And being that it's August, remember it's hot. So a lot of the fish that are not so heat temperate, you know, temperate, they're gonna be going deeper water. So striped bass, you're gonna see in deeper water. Sea bass, you're gonna see in deeper waters. A lot of times, you know, you'll have a stray fluke is gonna be like I mentioned shallow, especially when you have clouds of peanut bunker along the beach. But um, you're gonna find them usually focused on some of those larger fat porgies that are like a month, two months after the spawn. And those porgies are gonna be different size, but they're gonna be like three to five inches. And it's a meaty bite for a fluke that's really hungry, you know? And then they can hang out and they might not eat for a couple of days. So if you're focused on the fluke, you wanna use larger baits, nice big strip baits, pack your hooks on, practice that jigging you know if you're looking for bluefish i would definitely look at those times in the in the morning and then into uh the sun the sundown you know uh sunset and those are the magic hours for bluefish same thing for striped bass right now there's so much to do you have the daytime go porgy fishing go snapper fishing it's just endless things to do and again take advantage of all this wonderful sunny days that we have in august to spend time with uh friends and family and remember courtesy is contagious uh, keep it all upbeat keep it positive because these are those times where people are going to remember they're going to come visit for the week and they're going to take a lot of these memories back home with them let's keep them all upbeat and positive until next week i bid you all peace tight lines from the fire island area in great south bay let's check in with captain al lorenzetti Hey Matt, Fire Island Report. Uh, fluke fishing is really holding up well. Uh, a lot of quality fish being caught now. I heard an 11 pound fish caught on the Fire Island Reef. Uh, and even right from the inlet all the way to the back bay, fluke fishing is, I would say, really decent, really good. Um, bottom fishing is excellent. Put down a clam chum pot and you're gonna catch blowfish, kingfish. If you're on some structure, you're gonna catch trigger fish. So uh, great pan fish, great eating stuff. So. There's always that, and that's nice to do with kids. You anchor the boat, and you don't have to deal with running all over the place. So it's looking good. Fishing's good inside, Matt. And uh, offshore, there's a tuna bite still. And Colby, a little to the west of Fire Island on the bunker pods, and tons of sharks on the bunker pods. And I just want to mention, this weekend's the start of the Bergen Bay Docks uh, offshore blue water tournament. Captain's meeting is Thursday the 4th. Tournament runs 5th through the 14th and you fish any three days out of those 10, so you can really get around the weather problems. That's about it, Matt, for this week. Take care, catch them up, talk to you next week. Chris Landry has the Jamaica Bay report for us. Thanks, Matt. I need to make an amendment to last week's report about the lack of stripers in Jamaica Bay because we found them, but the trick is you gotta find them in about two feet of water in the back. Uh, if you wanna catch fish like this, schoolies size, like 22 inches, hit up wind hole charters. They specialize in top water and short water. Uh, and if you wanna catch water, uh, straight bass in New York Harbor, hit up Captain Vinny of Karen Ann Charters. Uh, we were catching them on little uh, top waters like this. The Chug Norse throws a ton of water and it's tiny. You can see it's totally beat up from stripers and bluefish or little peanut bunker baits, small baits. There's peanut bunker everywhere. The whole marina is lit up with peanut bunker. Outside of the bay, there's a lack of bunker. Uh, last week there was bunker, adult bunker everywhere you look. This week they are hard to find and there will definitely be sharks on them. Uh, there are bluefin tuna out there but they're very hard to get to bite. Uh, so good luck with that. There's also uh, the razor in heavy, you see them everywhere. The cobias are in. There's hundreds of dolphin out there, whales. Uh, it's like National Geographic. So get out there, enjoy nature, get tight. Thank you and back to you, Matt. Let's check in with Mac Finch from the Connecticut side of the Western Sound. The fishing has been on the slow side for the stripers. Our waters are really hot. The best bite we're hearing is definitely in the deeper water and then the sunset bite shallow around the islands. During the day, if you really want to target some striped bass, I would definitely work some deeper water or use stuff like tube and worm around the islands. That's a sure bet to try to find some bass. 
The strongest reports this past couple weeks have been from middle ground. There's been a lot of bait and a lot of bass. There's bass like mostly schoolie size, slot. We've seen some fish in the mid 40 inch range and uh, guys are getting them on flutter spoons, tube and worm and trolling umbrellas. To our west, there's a lot of big bluefish off Greenwich, Rye, down to Mamaroneck. These fish have been big. I've seen pictures of them in like the teen and low 12, 10 pound class. They're like harassing bunker schools in the morning and in the evening. And then guys chunking at night are reporting a fantastic bite. The blues in our area, they're definitely in the deeper water and they're coming in at night to feed. So guys chunking shallow around the islands, they're picking up some bass and then they're getting schmocked up in bluefish. And we're coming up on the bluefish tournament, so hopefully these fish stick around. It's at the end of this month. You can sign up in the shop, you get a shirt, and we're gonna be stocked up on all the bait you need and all the bluefish uh, tackle you need to catch these fish. The fluke fishing has been on the slow side. Guys are really working. I mean, we've seen some nice fish in like the five to seven pound class. If guys are getting their limit, they're really pounding the area and they're fishing all day. But uh, gulp seems to be the ticket. Guys are doing well on gulp. And now with all these little snappers around in our harbors and outside the islands, you can try getting some of those and drifting those for bait. The snappers are about like three to four, some five inch around. We've seen some kids getting them and this should only get better moving in to August. Black sea bass, definitely in the deeper water. Get on top of a wreck, get on like some deep water structure, deep reefs, do some jigging, bring clam chum and you'll find your limit. You gotta fish at least 50 feet or more. I know guys catch them by catching fluke in like 30, 40, but if you're looking for just sea bass, definitely get in the deep. Porgies, they're virtually on every piece of structure we got. Guys are getting them from the beaches, you know, the piers, all around the islands, you know, the deep water reefs, the shallow water reefs, you know, clams, sandworms, squid is always a favorite, and they'll take little small bucktails, little small jigs tipped with gulp. All right, thanks and good luck. Captain Mike Sentry has the latest from Staten Island. Thanks, Tim and Matt Hopewell as well, guys. Hey guys, Mike Sentry here for the West End Staten Island. Well, let's start off with the Flukin. The Raritan Bay has some shorts, not a lot of action. The water temperature's in the low 80s. Hit 81.5 uh, degrees this week. And it's probably gonna get a lot, lot hotter. Um, we're projected to have temperatures around 100 degrees tomorrow, Thursday, into Friday. On the offshore bite, Managed to make a trip out there to the Bacardi, the Texas Tower, even hit the Hudson, Little Italy, uh, AP, Glory Hole, Chicken Canyon, you name it. It was pretty much a barren wasteland. Uh, Mahi, just, just about that. Um, with that said, a couple of yellow fins and blue fins are a lot closer inshore under the 20 mile line, looking for that blue water. Uh, striped bass are starting to filter in from the east end of the Hudson uh, River. Uh, my friend uh, Guy went out today, got some really nice cobia. So here's this picture, and um, that's pretty much it. Another friend of mine, real quick, got a nice uh, 90, 94, 95 inch uh, bluefin tuna, caught and released. Uh, pretty much Ambrose Canyon, as you guys already know, on uh, Life Bunker. Uh, you could get them on Bluefish, but you know if you could get Life Bunker, it would be even better, especially adult size. And that's it with me. Um, pretty much get out of the sun and uh, enjoy the summer. Dog days of, of August are definitely here. And uh, let's see what this week produces. In three, two, one. Let's so we check in with Captain Ben Gilmore from Marina Pez Vela down in Costa Rica. Hey guys, and welcome to the Marina Pez Vela, Costa Rica with this week's fishing report. We got a really nice sailfish bite going on right now. 25 to 30 miles from Marina Pez Vela. Really nice sailfish bite, some days double digit uh, sailfish raised, some really, really good fishing. We've had yellowfin tuna out there, mahi mahi, and closer to shore, we've had a really nice rooster fish bite. Hope to see you guys down here soon. Back to you guys. Remember to like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and tap on the bell to be notified instantly when we post a new video on YouTube. Check out this week's video description on YouTube for all the related links and index for specific reports. Please support our correspondents by visiting their websites and social media pages. Get out there and fish. We'll see you right here next week at thefisherman.com.